Good morning, guys. Okay. Today I gonna test the reason why this car do not crank from the ignition switch. And I gonna determine if it is the starter relay, the ignition lock cylinder, or the starter himself. Uh, just to give you an idea, let me take, uh, put the switch on, try to crank it, and all you hear is, that noise, okay? So I'm gonna take the key off so this don't, the bit don't bother us. And the starter relay is located behind this kick panel here, which you gotta bring this stream up. And the relay is all the way down, the in the first roll, all the way down uh, next to the firewall okay so I don't gonna take that the ignition lock cylinder leaf under this cover here uh, we don't gonna get involved with that all we gonna do is that test the, we hear the the noise from the solenoid and the starter location that is right down there. Let me get a flashlight. Right down there, where you see the light, that is your starter. And the solenoid is in the top of the starter motor. So we're gonna do a test there. Also, we're gonna do a test in the battery to see how strong this battery is. Now this tool is sent it to me <clears throat> and I never did a video on it. So let's start by pressing okay here. Select language. Let's put it out off of the vehicle. I'm gonna select that before charge. I'm gonna select that. Regular floret, yes. Call cranking amps. Uh, let's see the call cranking amp. Let's put, um, I cannot see it because it's covered with that plate, but let's put like 500 call cranking amp. 550, I'm gonna do. Five six is okay for me. It's testing. Say replace the battery. You got only three hundred and seventy cold cranking amps. All right. So I got a battery at home. I'm gonna bring this battery in and see what happened. Now that I remove the battery, I give you a better location of the starter here, which is, this is the solenoid and this is the starter motor. Seems to be this starter look like the original one with that tag that you got there. This car is a 2006. Um, there's 70 millimeter bolt holding this starter. You got one in the top and one in the bottom. To get to the one in the bottom, you probably gotta remove this tray, the battery base tray, and uh, then remove the starter. But let's put a battery on it because we wanna make sure 
that the battery is good. I mean, we want to make sure we got a, enough cold cranking amps. And this battery that we take, it was like 300, which is not bad, you know, this, well, this is a six cylinder. If it was a four, I will say it's not bad, but six cylinder need a little bit more. But let's take that out of the, the picture and try the new battery and see what happened. Okay, another thing that you guys gotta keep in mind, you see when you introduce the key in the car, take a look of that little green key there. It goes off. That means the anti-theft is out of the picture. Now, if that light is remain on, uh, on with the switch on, meaning that, and it's flashing also, you're gonna be flashing and it's on with the switch on, your key needs to be programmed or you got a back lock ignition switch but let's try it. I put a new battery. Let's try what happened. All right. So, with a good battery, the car crank and start. Hmm. So I'm gonna try a couple of times, make sure this is not happening again and see what's going on. He's doing it again. Off. Key flashing, you see it. Switch on. The key disappear in the cluster. Try to crank it. Nothing happens. I think we got a bad starter here. Okay, the battery that I put in on is a brand new battery. It's a yellow top. It's a 35 group and the cold cranking amp in this baby is 620. But if I measure this battery, it's gonna be more than that. Uh, those people who doesn't know, these little guys here, the wrench, you gotta use a 10 millimeter, okay? Let me put the machine and see how much cold cranking amps this battery is. This is a gel. Six twenty. So this one got eight hundred and forty cold cranking amps. Good battery. My next text, I mean my next test is when I do that cranking noise, when the solenoid do that clicking noise, let's put it that way, the little wire here, this little wire here should have 12 volts, okay? This little wire here, when you uh, select, crank the engine from the inside, should have 12 volts. If you got five volts here, or you got four volts here, it will not crank the engine, it will make that noise, okay? So if I got 12 uh, 
bolts here we don't got to look for anything else we got to replace the starter just take a look of that connection there from the solenoid that the little wire and the solenoid that is very very corroded green corruption now i'm gonna take this out and try to clean it and see if that changed our situation this is after i clean it so let's see what happened here now Okay, because I am by myself, um, this is the thing. I put my fancy oscilloscope, which is, you can use any meter, voltmeter or whatever. My black wire is connected to the negative of the battery. The yellow wire is connected to that little guy that I clean, okay? So when I crank the engine, my meter here, that meter should jump to 10 volt, 11 volts, and see what happens. Now crank the engine. It will not do that funny noise because uh, it's not connected to the starter motor. As you can see, as you can see, is jumping to 12 volts, which is, you see 1230, and that is in voltage. Crank again, 1231. Crank again, 1231. Okay, that tells me that wire, well, I clean it. Now I'm gonna connect it back with dielectric and see if the car cranks all the time, okay? With this test, with the uh, Vantage Ultra voltmeter, the, you can use any meter, uh, I, I, I I want to say that you can use any meter, put in voltage. And every time I cycle the ignition switch to crank the engine, that meter changed to 12 volt. That means my battery is good. That means uh, the relay, the starter relay is transferring the power to that little wire. That means this ignition switch is working at that point to crank the engine. I don't say they got other problems, but that means that this is uh, working. The circuit is working just to crank the uh, starter. Now, if the starter is do, uh, doing the same thing, that you hear that solenoid, activating and the starter not cranking the engine meaning that starter need to be replaced okay so i uh, the little wire is back together there i put dielectric on it clean the terminals and I'm gonna crank the engine Turn that off, crank it again. Turn it off, 
crank it again. Turn it off. Crank it again. Guys, I think we fixed the problem. Was the little wire to the solenoid corroded? I clean it, put the electric on it, and it's cranking like a champ. Let's see. And it's working. All right, guys. Let me put the old battery back together, which is not good. It needs to be replaced and see what happened. Okay, after too many starts and the engine, it fell one time. It did that clicking noise, uh, meaning uh, the cleaning is done. The battery, uh, we know that needs to be changed because it got low crunk, cold cranking amps and the starter corruption in that terminal is very bad. Uh, the one that I clean from the wire, that is good but the corruption inside the solenoid is very bad. I try to clean it as best I can, but to be 100% sure and you don't, it doesn't fail again, I recommend to change the battery and replace the starter. One thing I don't show in the video was uh, I use this tool here, Power Pro 4 to determine how good is the engine ground because when you got that clicking noise also could be an engine ground that is bad. What you do basically with this tool, you connect the red and black in the battery terminals. And then the point here, you touch the ground and the engine and have somebody cranking the engine and when it makes that noise here, it will be like one bolt if the ground is good or less than that. Um, if you got like seven, six, five, four bolts coming up here when you crank the engine, minus four and 12, it will be eight volts. Yes, you probably gonna have that clicking noise in the car and not cranking the engine.